Good afternoon, and welcome to what may be a challenging conversation. Um, let's see what happens. This is episode 769. The topic today is toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. These labels are wrong. Sorry, these labels are incorrect. Here's why. Because this has been coming up a lot recently. And Sorry, before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. Before I jump in, I'm like ready to jump in, but let me start with introduce myself. Hi, my name is Barry Selby, if you haven't seen me before. Welcome to my broadcast. I do these daily chats at 5 p.m. Pacific on my personal page on Facebook, and I'll give you all the links at the back end. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is why this stirred me up in the first place. I'll get to that. And also what led to these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 569, and uh, I'm going to unpack some things here and maybe upset some people. Hopefully it's going to help you bring you some clarity as well because I've been hearing these labels thrown around and it's, it's bugging me. So let me talk about this. So again, the topic today is toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. These labels are incorrect and here's why. And I didn't, I had some others are saying it, but I thought that's the best way of explaining it because lately they come up again. Um, this guy, um, is it Joe Epstein? Epstein, the guy in New York who's back in, in the limelight for his abuse of kids is what's been revoking, or sorry, has been re-triggering this conversation about toxic masculinity. And I have had an issue with this since the beginning because first of all, I said that it's not toxic masculinity, it's toxic machoism. Because I was really clear for me that masculinity is not toxic. M masculinity is often, often mis misrepresented and portrayed separately, but true masculinity is healthy, aligned, and authentic. The toxic part was in mas was in machoism, which is selfishness. But I realize now I'm actually not quite correct either, so I want to correct that as well. And some people have been throwing around this toxic feminism thing, which also bugs the bejesus out of me too, because feminist, I'm sorry, feminist, feminine, let me try again, femininity, that's the word. <laughs> like masculinity is not toxic, it's healthy, it's aligned, it's authentic, it's expression. These are beautiful qualities of men and women when they're aligned to their true values. So let me take masculinity and femininity out of the conversation for a minute. Let's talk about toxicity. Because this is really the point of the whole conversation. And this is why I want to speak about it now, because it's been on my mind for a while. Because first of all, toxicity, let me just give you like the the the, the dictionary definition. Basically it talks about poison. About lethal poison that kills people. That's kind of what toxicity comes from. Or there can be you know also chemical spill stuff like that. So when you put toxicity into the language of people you're saying that they're poison. And I'm like, it's not quite like that because toxicity, unfortunately, has been a paintbrush that has been painted over many, many things with the same color when they have distinct and different presentations. So that some things that they use to cover up, yes, with the Me Too conversation and things like that as well, it's become very prevalent. However, toxic behavior, and this is the thing, it's not the people, it's the behavior. And, I'll, and I'll, I'm not letting people off the hook. So before you jump down my throat, and you may want to comment and respond in the interaction. I'm going to talk about these things in different pieces. So let me let me do a, a circuit of this. So, well, I'm just going to do this. I'm, you have to let me. I'm going to do it anyway. It's my broadcast. <laughs> so toxic behavior is behavior that is usually otherwise labeled as malevolent, as abusive, as hurtful, as demeaning, as... I, well, that covers all of it, I think. But it's all those different qualities that are negative. So when somebody is raped, the behavior is toxic. If you want to leave it that way, it's, it's hurtful, it's abusive, it's painful, it's et cetera, et cetera. In relationships that are that way. See, the thing is toxic can be, has been used in so many different ways, but the thing is, as a blanket statement, it's, it's inaccurate. There is, let me qualify this too, a abhorrent, way that so, that a lot of men have been towards men, other men and also towards women. That's why the whole Me Too conversation starts up. But it's not toxic. It's it's fucked up. Let me, let me be blunt. I, didn't, I, mean, I don't usually swear in my broadcast, but it's really big, it's been triggering me. But I don't want to use that global toxic masculinity. It's an inaccurate statement. What it really is, is a mixture of ignorance, arrogance, egotism, selfishness, a distorted sense of entitlement and empowerment, and, and, and flank, frankly, it's just wrong. And, and I know I shouldn't, I mean, right, wrong is not on the conversation, but the truth is when I see that behavior out in the world where I see men hurting women, whether it's verbally, emotionally, 
physically, sexually, or any of that stuff, it really triggers me in a, in a negative way because it really brings out in me the protect. I mean, in a good way, it brings out the protective instinct to in me. But what I really get is that. I'll get okay. I'll get to that in a minute. Sorry, I'm going to slight. Don't be showed up. <laughs> it does that in my broadcast. But the truth is, what what it is is that it's it's. It, I mean, I talk about it as being unfair. It's it's hurtful. It's all different things. Okay, okay. Sorry, this piece has been banging in the back of my head. Not to talk about it. So, thank you, Sarah, and thanks for commenting. I see my broadcast, by the way. Um, it, it's this is part of a rant, but it's also more than that because here's the thing. Now, again. I'm going to do a full circuit, so don't don't start judging what I'm saying as I go through it. But all of these people who are beha behaving in a way that looks toxic to the labeling system out there weren't born that way. I'm going to, I'm going to say this very clearly, but I also want to make sure that I'm not excusing behavior. In this framework, all of these people, like like Epstein, like like Trump, even I'm not going to get political, but in terms of people who behave this way, weren't born that way. However, they were raised in an environment where either they were told, taught, educated by parents or demonstrated to by the adults around them that certain behaviors were okay. And those behaviors weren't okay based on what they do when they're adults. Maybe they got too, you know, abusive of other people and it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't re-educated, they weren't trained, they weren't punished, they weren't taught differently. So, a lot of this adult behavior is based upon mislearned youth. So it's basically the imprinting either subconsciously or verbally out loud that certain things were good, certain things were bad, or nothing was bad, it was all good, and you get away with anything you want. So these people who are doing things as adults that are abhorrent behaviors, partly it is cultural as well, because it's also the way the culture was set up that didn't respect women, which is unfortunate, and I think we're starting to come out of it in pieces, but we're nowhere near complete yet, just to be clear about that but also because of the way they were raised in their own families. And I'm not saying this to be sorry for them or to excuse their behavior. Let me be clear about that. But in their behavior, in their upbringing as children, they were raised in families that maybe they were so toxic, so wounded, so hurt. Um, just as, just let me remember. Yeah, th thank you, Barbara. And I see my broadcast, appreciate the comment. This is the thing, um, I'm, I'm using movie reference. I'm sorry about that, but it's coming up. I don't know if you saw, if you haven't seen Spider-Man um, Far From Home, which, which came out last week, so it's only been out for a week. I'm not gonna basically give a spoiler, but however, I'm gonna tell you about one little thing I saw in the movie. It was a little telling piece that they put in intentionally. The Flash Thompson character, and if you haven't seen the movie, I'll ex I'm gonna explain it so you understand know what I mean, has such an arrogance and bullying style, even though he's a young, a small kid in the film, but he's bullying um, Peter Parker and the other people, like, he's just arrogant, like SOB, I'm in charge, I've got money, he drives, he drives his own car, he's all cool. But in the movie, there's this, there's there's hints drop where he reaches out to his mother and father where they're always away and he doesn't feel like he's being loved. And in fact, one scene in the airport when they get to, was London? Or was New York? I mean, it was thing was London, where he was met by the chauffeur and he asked him, oh, is my mother gonna meet me? And, he, and the guy shakes his head. So there's this thing about his behavior as a bully came out of the fact he wasn't getting the love that he needed to be fulfilled. So that little vignette from the movie speaks volumes to this piece that people deal with where they become hurtful and abusive. And I, and I said before in other um, videos, I was bullied in my school years. I can look back and I, can, I don't know for sure because I don't know the parents of all these kids, but the kids that bullied me, I'm pretty sure, came from families where they were either allowed to do that or were, in, were forced into it by neglect or by Miss, uh, what's the other piece I was going to use? Not uh, love in inappropriate, inappropriate ways. I'm leaving that hanging for that reason. So there's a lot of this stuff happening where the behavior that is imprinted on children starts to exhibit itself and outpicture when they're adults in negative, painful, hurtful ways to other people. Which brings me back to the beginning. Those people, are, if they've done things that are impactful, negative in other people, they've been hurtful, they've been damaging, they've been lethal, they've been wounding on other people. They have to pay a price, so I'm not going to excuse that. But I'm also clear that this toxic labeling, thank you, Sarah, I appreciate you. This, I mean, let me say this. I have a background in spiritual psychology where we study this deeply, so I do understand where this works in, in our psychology and how we work, so this is not, not pulled out of thin air. I do actually have some um, 
studies under my belt <laughs> and some a lot of reading content and a lot of books I read on this stuff too so this is my distillation of that so I'm glad you I'm glad it makes sense to you um, so rewinding a second the me too conversation that started a while back and it's interesting so I'm seeing Facebook lives of mine from a year or two ago thank you Sarah appreciate that from a year or two ago spoke to the me too conversation when it was very very like primed and brand new and it's and it's not done yet by any means if I just saw a reading article about um, um, oh what's his name he's the Indian Pakistani comedian who just got a Netflix special again um, Ansari and I've got his first name will come back to me how in the beginning of his comedy routine he talks about what happened the accusations and his um, humility about that see that was a healing moment I believe and it can trigger people both ways I understand but what I get clearly is that at least in his case and not so many anybody else there's a sense of culpability there which is part of the healing process but the other people out there again like this guy Epstein I have no mercy for I have and Aziz thank you thank you Karen nice to see my broadcast yes Aziz and Zari thank you but like this Epstein character in the, from New York I have no mercy for this guy I'm sorry when you abuse children and especially when you sexualize young girls it's like I will turn my back on you. I will, I will not offer any mercy, any kindness. As much as I'm supposed to be a spiritual practitioner, I'm sorry, I am a spiritual practitioner, not supposed to be. And all this training of being a caring, forgiving, caring person, there's a price to be paid for what he did. And I have no um, reservation about that being paid on some level. So if forgiveness is something that we apply to ourselves. As I talked about this before, um, yesterday I talked about this. Forgiveness is something we do for, no, I didn't talk about it yesterday, it was last week. I think, I talked about it a while ago about how forgiveness is for ourselves to let ourselves off the hook. That's a sidebar for later. I'll come back to that. So again, this thing about toxicity as a label to put on, as, an, uh, as a description to put on the front of masculinity and femininity does not belong. I'm going to be clear about that. Toxic behavior, yes. Toxic egotistical behavior, yes. Although toxic still is a thing about poison, which I'm not actually liking about it. But to be in a hurtful framework, and the, the toxic term is a new one just to make it more dramatic, I believe, frankly. So I don't think a toxicity as a term is necessarily appropriate in human behavior. There are people who are such heinous, negative, villainous characters that do things that are so painful to other people that maybe toxicity is the simple term to put on top of that. But these are individuals, not a culture. So again, as I said before, the whole thing with the Me Too conversation where so many men are being called out into the light for the darkness they've been carrying around, they've oppressed to pay that's not toxic masculinity. That's really heinous behavior by men who thought they'd get away with it. And frankly, in some ways, by taking the toxic label off, it takes away the importance of what they did, meaning that they don't get to shine, they don't get to stand up and look how proud they are. They get to be humbled and penalized for what they did, and they get to pay the price which is needed to come into balance. So, I'm, I'm putting out an intention here, which I, I mean, if it goes viral, yeah, great. But I'm putting an intention here to let people know that the term toxic masculinity and the term toxic femininity does not work. Because as I said, masculinity and femininity are pure terms that describe a polarity of energetics. And you, you just can't put, you can't put those terms on the front. Toxic behavior, yes. Toxic personality disorders, perhaps, yes. But toxic masculinity and femininity don't fit together. So that's my, agenda that's my point but again there's so many people who've yet to really get the understanding of what their toxic behavior is and it, it's I, I see I have hope about this although I don't see it changing yet but we're changing our culture to wake up to the fact that our that our society has yet to grow into a place of maturity where people simply can't get away with this bullshit anymore this negative behavior, this, this crappy way of being, because it's something that needs to change. So I'm not saying toxicity is not real. I'm saying the behavior is definitely real. And I don't have answers for all this, just to be clear. I'm just putting out on, the, on this conversation about what needs to change is yes, kids need to be raised differently. Definitely it's part of the problem. There are, there are kids that are being raised now that may or may not end up doing the same behavior as some of the other people who've been called out on for their Me Too um, actions against women, particularly men against women that will still happen because that that behavior has been passed down this, this is another part by the way of the lineage thing 
So as I said before about how some of these adults when they were children were raised in environments where they either got love was withheld from them or they were abused or hurt when they were young and they just visited them to other people as an adult. The thing is, quite likely their parents when they were younger, the same thing happened to them. These patterns are not just out of the blue starting up from nowhere. They go back to a, a history. So a lot of these families that, or I should say a lot of these adults who are doing this behavior come from a lineage of that sort of behavior going back generations. Because the toxic behavior, the neg the, the um, I want another word for it, um, abusive, for example, behavior is learned through generational learning uh, parent, to, parent to child, parent to child, parent to child. So part of it is we need to change our system of how we educate children. We do need to raise children in a different way and whether it's in the family dynamic or in the school dynamic or in some other social engagement where they get to learn what it's like to respect other people, what it's like to respect themselves, it's a big part of it too, and what it's like to be humble in service because that will change some mindsets too. So I'm passionate about this message to getting out there for people to see it because frankly, we've got a long way to go. There are more of us waking up, thankfully, but we are certainly not there yet. There's so much yet for us to really understand, to express, and to really come together to say, let's stand for something good rather than complaining about what's bad. So this um, topic is a, is, a, is a starting point in some ways. So removing masculinity and femininity from the conversation, because frankly, this is all about toxic behavior, is where we need to do the work. Both for those who have been um, victimized need to be supported, served, and helped. Those who are perpetrating the victimization need to be stopped and, I keep saying punished, but it's not the right word. Well, stopped is a big, is a big part of it. And then perhaps some sort of, there is retribution needs to be done. Yes, whatever that needs to be. I don't have, I'm not the judge on this. I can't presume what that would be as a, as a punitive or as a um, response to what happened. But we haven't got there yet. The fact there's still sex trafficking happening, the fact there's so much that needs to happen, we're far behind, far away from where we need to be. However, we're moving in the right direction. So, um, there you go. Thank you for that, Sarah. Yeah, so let's have something beautiful, blessed, and uplifting, being integrity alignment. Yes, and those people who don't do that, we need to talk about too. So thank you, thank you, Barbara, as well. Appreciate the messages. Um, so this is something I want, I mean, I'm, I may be talking about this more, I don't know. These talks are never scripted or planned. Every time I've done a series of talks, they weren't a series until I was already at the end of it. <laughs> so this may be another topic I'll continue tomorrow, but, because, but we'll see, I'm not promising. This is definitely something we need to talk about more in, in public in conversations, in groups, in circles, to remember that those individuals who are acting in a toxic way are not, thankfully, the majority. We have room to grow, yes, as a culture. We are focusing where we are going directionally. There's some changes coming, I hope, that will change the way that we do things politically as well. That's, again, another conversation. But this piece of this, this toxicity that's been percolating through the culture for many generations I suspect it's coming to light more now because it's coming to an end. There's a, I remember somebody I was talking to a long time ago said about how the more light that shows up on the planet, the more concentrated the darkness becomes. So it may look like there's more violence, more against us, more wounding, more terrorism, more trouble, more challenges. But what it is, it's being concentrated into smaller, smaller spaces because it's like a zit. Yeah, like, like a zit. It's being expelled so that light can shine more brightly everywhere. I like to think that's the truth. Um, I hope you do too. But also don't, don't be complacent. Stand up to bad behavior. Stand up to toxic behavior. Stand up for those who don't stand up for themselves. Help those around you who need the help to be a strong supporter, a shoulder for them to lean on, and a guide for them to see where the truth is. And for those people who need help to remember their own light so they stop abusing other people, that's a deeper calling. I don't recommend everybody jump into that. But the truth is all of us individually, I said this, I said this yesterday, and the day before. We as individuals are all worthy beings, period. We just forget when we're around on this planet because we compare ourselves against other people. When we remember our worth, there is no desire to visit pain on other people. So maybe part of the lesson is we start to learn how bright we are. Karen, oh, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. Yeah, that's really what I, yeah, that's, that's kind of the message. But the thing about it is the brighter the light, the less shadow there is, it's just more concentrated. So yes, the darker the shadow, because it's getting more concentrated, more dense. 
But the truth is, at the same time, there's a lot more light around, which means it's, it's where the majority is. And that's where I believe we're going. We are, we are moving towards that direction. And I know more and more people are standing up in the light. And I've got friends of mine, I feel the same way, that are stepping up for a higher mission. But at the same time, we can't, we won't, and we needn't pretend everything else is okay. It's, it's, it's like being, being, standing for the light and being vigilant against the darkness. I should say vigilant to transform the darkness, perhaps. That's a deeper, that's a deeper message I'm going there. I'm not going there right now. But yes, so thank you for all the interaction, by the way. It's given me some food for thought. I hope this has given you some food for thought. It's one of my pet peeves that's been brewing for a while. I wanted to talk about it loudly this way. I've done it on posts before, and I've responded to other people's posts on social media because I feel this is part of our change that we're going through, is to really get clear about what this toxicity is. And please, let's separate toxicity from masculinity and toxicity from femininity because both masculinity and femininity, as I said before, and I'll keep saying it, are authentic polarities of beingness that are not toxic. What people do in their behavior is toxic, but the energetic of who people are, that's authentic. So toxicity, yes, we gotta do something about that. But toxic masculinity and toxic femininity are missed labels and I do not support them. So please erase them from your vocabulary. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I think that makes my point. You shine your light on the darkness whenever possible. Thank you, Barbara, I appreciate that, as, as, as do I and as a lot of people do. It is challenging sometimes when there's a lot of it in one place. That's the other part, by the way, is that sometimes you walk into spots of darkness where you're so surrounded by it, you think there's no light around. But the truth is, there's more and more light than there is darkness. So being seen and heard is owning our power. Thank you, thank you for that, Sarah. Yes, and Karen, well, actually, Karen, you said toxicity is a choice. The labeling of toxicity is a choice, but I think toxicity for a lot of people who do it is because they've been trained that way. So it's not a choice necessarily until they see there's a choice. They don't think they have a choice. That's, that's the problem that we're talking about is that people who act badly, who are being toxic towards the rest of the population, don't think they have a choice. They think it, they, have, they, have to, they have to do it or think it's the only way to be. Or they don't even think it's a bad thing. They think it's just normal. So toxicity, I don't believe is a choice. The toxicity in our own lives we can work with, yes. It is a choice when you raise your vibration or wake it, raise your awareness or become aware of the fact that it's not right. But most people who are being toxic have no clue. Which is why things like the Epstein case in New York has to be public, has to be um, justifiably served so that people who maybe see that change their minds. So that people who have maybe done that will walk away. Maybe they'll make amends. To make amends, to be culpable, to become humble is a step in the right direction for those people who do not have a clue yet. But again, I'm not the judge on this. I don't have the right punishments to hand out. I'm just suggesting that there's some change we can make. And if we come together, the more and more of us and stand in our truth and our light and hold that torch high, then we can maybe make a difference for those people who don't know there is a possibility of difference. So yeah, exa exactly, Karen, yes, I agree with you. As a self-aware human, you have a choice. Yes, as do I, as do all of us. Um, but a lot of people don't even know they have a choice. That's why I'm saying they, they don't know that they can do it because they're not, well, because they're not aware. <laughs> so as you said, as an aware, uh, we're human, yes. Unfortunately, not all humans are aware, which is the problem we're facing. So the more we wake up, the more we wake up with the people, the better, which is why I do these talks. So thank you, Karen, I'm glad you don't stand for it. And thank you, Barbara, for, for, the, for the thanks too. Um, I feel like I've just spent my energy on that one. So I think I'm complete on this topic, <laughs> at least today. Again, this might be continued tomorrow, we'll see. Um, these talks are never scripted, never planned, as I said, and they are also, I never know if there's gonna be a part two, part three. So this is just what I'm talking about today. It might extend, we'll see. Just tune in tomorrow and have a look and watch. So if you haven't seen me broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So 5 p.m. tomorrow, I'll be back. You can join me then. <sighs> we'll see what that's about then. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do them every day at 5 p.m. on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my broadcast, there are a bunch of replays out there. This is number 769. So you can watch my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. And then also on my YouTube channel, which is much easier to look for, by the way. Um, I have a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. And you can watch more broadcast there as well. So having said all that, I thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, reach out to me. I, I'm here to support you. I'll put a link in the comments if you want to chat because I do offer counseling, counseling coaching for women and that will be an invitation in the comments. And 
I think that's about it. I thank you for watching. If you haven't seen the thing from the beginning, please watch from the beginning. It was a lot more emphatic at the beginning. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I welcome your feedback, comments, and thoughts. Please put them below or respond when I sign off. I thank you for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow. Um, yeah, stand up for what's right. I appreciate the comment, Karen. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.